Got a question? Ask Tom on Home Show Radio. This is Home Show Radio live on Facebook and YouTube. Your questions, Tom's answers. Now here's Tom Tynan and Charlie Mosier. And here we go with Home Show Radio. Ask Tom live is what we're doing here because it is live. I think I'm alive. Let me let me check my pulse. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good right now. Looking lively to me, boy. I'm not sure about him. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say, uh, I'd say you, you, you're looking lively to me. Let, let me see. Oh, it's saying I'm going to make it through the weekend, I think, too. Fan- that means I'm going to be on the radio 9 to 12. Oh, oh hang on a second. Here we go. Yep. <laughs> and a tool. Yeah, we got to get this done first. So, yes, it, it's promote, it says I'll be here this weekend from 9 to noon and 8 to 11 on Sunday. Saturday's 9 to noon. And, of course... We have to grow those things because soon we'll be picking fruit in the backyard because there won't be any grocery stores. So we're going to ask Danny Milliken how we can feed ourselves just growing stuff in the backyard and a lot of other stuff with a whole bunch of garden pros that work the show with them. And they're on before me at 7 to 9 on Saturday. Good I, love the, I love the little thumbnail they have of, I think it's... Um joey from enchanted there if you go back and look at it doesn't it look like he's wearing one of those chiquita banana hats there when he, you know the- I, I actually was noticing that when i was looking at i was just going to ignore it but he has a flower growing out of his it head. does it looks like you know okay. he's a chiquita banana and i'm here to say okay all right hey, can you still sing picture. can you still sing that song is that allowed because i know you can't sing the frito bandito song anymore uh, that i'm not getting out. canceled so i don't do anything or, or aunt jemima or anything i just say yes ma'am no, oh, yep. I can't say that either. No, yes, I don't say anything. Yes. <laughs> I'm on radio. <laughs> I don't know if yes is allowed. Yeah, yeah who knows. <laughs> okay. I'll tell you what is allowed, home improvements. Yes. That's there, safe. There you go. For anybody with a home. But, um, yeah, home improvements, and that's what we're here to do, talk about home. Tom, uh, we get questions in our, our Ask Tom section, homeshowradio.com. Tom, in case you don't know it, Tom's a home builder for years has a degree in architecture has been on the radio 35 years helping people um largely in houston and texas but in other places too and and now he's on here to help you and if you want to get your questions answered you can just go ahead and put it in the comment section down below it'll come up here on my little screen here and we'll ask tom for you and you can get questions today for help uh, with you know you know anything from your foundation to the roof and in between walls and electrical and plumbing and Gas. Yeah, but Charlie, you say just Houston, but in the past, you had a syndicated in Dallas, San Antonio, Corpus, Beaumont. You'll have to add some of the cities I don't know. And, I think it was Waco and San Marcos. And, and, and what do they all have in Austin. common, Tom? They're all in Texas. I don't live there. <laughs> They're all in Texas, yes. <laughs> That's right. But I also so. did the first series on home and garden television called Dream yeah. House. Mm-hmm. Uh, it had a little really bad TV show called Our House that was in Chicago mm-hmm. and Nebraska and... So it's it's been a trial and error, but guess what? Houston's my home. I know Houston's your home mm-hmm. too, and that's where we're gonna end it someday, but not yet, because according to my pulse, I'm gonna be around a while. Yeah, at least through the weekend. <laughs> at least through the weekend. Yeah, my grandmother used to have an expression. She'd say, hey, we could all be dead and buried a week from now. So we'll be here this weekend. All right. So, I hope so. I hope we're not jinxing something. But yes, we're <laughs> exactly. Be here this weekend. Anyway, so we'd love to hear from you if you want questions. Go and put them down there. So let's. But in the meantime, let's get things rolling here, Tom. With one of the ones from uh, the Ask Tom section, Home Show Radio. This one comes from Gary in Willowbrook. He says, "My 25 year old uh, brick." is uh, all the way around the house. My 25-year-old home, rather, is brick all the way around, except for the fascia boards, window trim, etc. And I have a lot of rotten wood around the house, and I also need a new roof. So what's the order I should take these on in? And do I call Rudy's Quality Painting for the wood replacement and painting? What say you? I tell you, there's if, if you don't have a fascia board issue, but the rotten wood is around your windows and areas like that, I would tell you if there's no fascia work that needs to be done, go ahead and do the roof first because all those roofers and all that debris coming off your house and everything else, if you have a nice fresh paint job, something might get damaged where you'll have to touch it up. But if you do have fascia work and whatnot, then if you need to, you can probably get out the roof, but have the guys come out and replace the fascia boards before they do the drip edge. So it's a little tricky, but it has to do with what kind of work needs to be done just around the edge of the roof. But if I could, if it works out for you, I'd prefer to see 
roof go on, and then Rudy come out and do all the carpentry work, although they could do the carpentry work before the, the roof and then come back and paint. But I'd like to see the paint at the end because that way it won't be touched and it'll look really nice and fresh and get it done. So maybe have Rudy come out, do the rotten wood, have the roofers get the roof on, and then go ahead and have Rudy come back and just paint it and leave it at that. That might mm -hmm. be a good sequence if you have fascia board problems. Now, couldn't the roofer do the fascia for him? Some could, but if he's going to have a carpenter come out, they might as well do the whole thing. I think it would be easier. if they're... He says there's a lot of rotten wood. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of work to be done before the paint job even starts, so they could actually time the two pretty close together. Okay. But, yeah, some roofers will do. There's no doubt. They, some good roofers will, will do fascia board, no doubt. I just had to, I had to uh, go ahead and punch my uh, phone so I wouldn't get calls during the show. <laughs> okay, I already did one. Yeah. Bunch yeah, of, well, because professionals prepare in advance. The rest of us do it on the fly. <laughs> yeah. so, thank yes. you, Tom. It's like All after right. this, I have to call Spectrum to get my phone line fixed. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know, yes. it's funny you say that, you know, about you know, the order and stuff. We were talking about right yes. before we went on the air about um, the the expense and thing. And, and isn't it funny how, you know, with COVID, even though we're, I mean, pretty much on the, I like to think we're on the healing end of that. Because we don't live in the Seychelles or, or or India, bless their hearts. But I mean, we're and yet things are still moving really slow. And I, I don't know if that has any connection with with the the, the skyrocketing cost of of, bis, of building materials. We we were talking to an electri electrician this week who told us that a package of wire that he would normally pay one hundred and forty dollars for was four hundred and eighty dollars. Or no. Yeah, $480, I think it was. It's just an absurd amount of money. It is. I saw a piece of 4 by 8 plywood that's three quarters of an inch thick, which is a thick piece of plywood, is $97 for one piece. Uh, so the cost of homes are going twenty to thirty to $40,000 a typical home. They're going up. And people say, well, it's just the materials. Unfortunately, it's going to be everything because of the fact that gasoline's going up. Uh, rubber tire prices are going up. you got trucks involved. Tool prices are going up. And the guys working, since all the prices go up, including, I think you've seen in the news, food prices and things like that, their pay is going to go up. And because the demand is getting smaller and there's not that many people working, they're able to raise their prices because it's either them or nobody. And people want to mm -hmm. get things done. So it's going to be an interesting, and it's not going to be just a couple of months. Uh, I was trying to buy some boxes today and some breaker panels for my electrical program that I run. And I can't get them for 16 months, not weeks but months before the, the surplus is gonna come back. I think mm -hmm. really what happened was, is we had a big surplus. When the COVID hit, production stopped. So everybody went into the warehouses. Construction did not stop. Construction was great through this whole lockup, believe it or not. So they just used everything up. And now there's the warehouses are empty. Production's gonna have to ramp up mm -hmm. and production takes months before you fill the warehouses again. I'll tell you somewhere else that happened. I was reading the Wall Street Journal, I think it was earlier this week, is that uh, auto manufacturers and a lot of manufacturers yes. went to a thing called just-in-time manufacturing. And the idea was that because the supply chain could deliver things right on time, that they could delay ordering things until right before they need it. So circuit boards would arrive right when they need it. Mufflers would show up just when they need it and all that. And that's perfect until there's a disruption in the supply chain, which is what's happened now. And so now they're really rethinking this um, and it's going to cause their, their GM and Ford are having to put in warehouses again and they're starting to warehouse stuff to, to be able to maintain consistent production. But there's a, the, supply, the supply line principle at work here is called the bullwhip. And that is where demand goes up, right? Demand goes up and then supply it lags behind it then it's going to go up and then it's going to do this and it's going to do this for a while until it all shakes out so but you know what else happens is now that they're going to build let's say they build everybody builds warehouses and starts mm -hmm. buying everything that comes out well now you go into panic buying because there's not enough just to spread out throughout the right. the country and that goes with food and everything mm -hmm. toilet paper you saw that happen where it's just people start panic buying and start hoarding and then that makes a real mess out of the whole deal to try to get the system mm -hmm. back so I would tell people to do calm buying. Just buy what you need. We'll be okay, but don't get into that panic buying because it hurts everybody. Tires are the next thing. 
Oh, I know it. And roofing materials. We haven't mm-hmm. got into that uh, yet. Yeah, but. It, yeah, petroleum-based things. Yes. Because I think there's... A, Which I is think about I, everything. I think <laughs> I heard something about license, you know, permits being held up and, and fracking being stopped. I don't know. It could be... I'm not going that route, but I tell you what, people don't realize plastic, everything comes from oil. Well, and you, you, you a, can choose electric not to... car has a whole bunch of plastic in it. Mm-hmm. So anyway, you can choose not to go that route, but we're all on the same bus. I'll just tell you that. I know. All right. Gretchen's got a question for us here. She says, I have two windows that won't stay open. They slam closed when I open them. It looks like some sort of chain is coming out of the side. Who do I call to fix this? I'd rather not replace my windows. Okay, first off, that's your sash spring, and it is let go. You can you can have them repaired. Now the question is, who's going to do it? Uh, those are old aluminum windows where the springs start to fall, and they need to be wrapped back up inside. And then they have a little uh, T channel that they step up into and hold themselves tight. And when one goes, the other one goes real quickly because it can't hold the whole weight. So you don't have to get rid of the windows. Who you're going to call, I would start, and I think the only place you can call, and we have one certified Home Show Pro here in the Houston area that probably will lead you in the right direction. They're called Glass Doctor. Because this happens a lot when glass windows get broken and the, and the sash springs will pop out. And so I wouldn't doubt that they have a, a way of fixing the glass and either fixing that, because it's real simple, or having someone that does it. So call Glass Doctor first and see if they can lead you in the right direction or if they can even help you with that. But it's a simple fix. It's just, it's it's not a business somebody's in just to fix those windows. And the big mistake is calling window companies that sell replacement windows. They won't touch something like that. They'll just tell you you have to replace all your windows when you really don't, unless you really want to. We did. Replace your windows? Yeah, well, it replaced our windows. Yeah, but it cause, wasn't because the sash springs broke. You don't open your windows anyway. No, it's because they're they're ugly as sin. <laughs> yeah, because they're ugly <laughs> as sin. You know, yeah, that's a good I reason. Mean, I'm good with that. Yeah, no, they're 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 butt ugly. Um, but I mean that in I mean that in the, in the nicest possible way. But yeah, no, they had to, it was Sandy and I were like, well, we, we they just had to go. Hey, Gretchen says cool. Thanks. So yeah, call, okay. call, Thanks, call Glass Doctor there, Gretchen. And by the way, if you're looking yeah. for them and any of our home show pros, go over to homeshowradio.com. You will find all the pros arrayed right there down the side of the of the website and uh, in the homepage. Or click find a pro and search by category. So if you're looking for a, a glass person, glass repair, you'd go there and take you to the same place. And that's how... That's how it works. That's homeshowradio.com. And we're we're real careful about who gets on there. Tom um, carefully vets everybody who gets on there. It's true. I do. Yeah. I, I really we, do. We find yes. a lot of people. Tim and I find a lot of people. And then Tom goes, yay, not this one. And so um, that's yeah, the people Tim, he does. Tim sometimes doesn't like me. <laughs> He's such a nice guy. He pretends he does. But I think when he goes home... He yells at the dog. <laughs> he's got a. My understanding is he's got. He, you know, he, they were over in Louisiana and they bought a Tom Tynan doll and some pins. So if you're having some, yeah, pain, that might be. <laughs> okay. Now, hey, we got a he's question a last. Guy. We got a question last week, and I, I saved it. I actually sent this to you, and I don't think you got it um, from a, a friend of mine who was watching, um, and he asked. Uh, I'm going to ask you his question right now, and then we'll get back to more of the ones from the um, from the website here. Okay. He says, um, a friend of mine, Mike, microphone keeps getting away from here. Uh, a friend of mine, he says, my second story has a squeaky plywood deck and unlevel spots. We're thinking about selling and want to do this cheap. We There's a whole topic there. That's probably there. why I ignored it. When I see words like cheap and no money, I think, well, I can't really help you. But go ahead. I'm listening. Craig's a good to guy. I want to help him out. I know okay. he's a good guy, but he does want to do it cheap. Don't do anything at all. What do I right. tell people? Clean That's up right. the house and sell it. That's it. So don't do let, anything at all. Let them fix, it, let them do fix it. Either do it well or don't do it because they're going to buy mm-hmm. the house. Just sell it as is. And it's Craig, unlevel. I, if they put new floor yeah. covering, they'll put uh, a leveling compound down. Right. They'll put some mechanical fasteners, screw the floor down. That's mm-hmm. fine, but... Don't do anything when you sell a house. So if that's what I missed, I'm sorry. I, I don't remember seeing that, Charlie. But no, it's all right. Uh, no, no, there's more. He's got more here. But I, I will oh, tell you I'm this. Sorry. I was no, it's all right. But the, the Craig is um, he's on the verge of being an empty nester, and I'm here to tell you that you know that that to to a family that's going to buy that house with kids, the squeaky floors upstairs are actually a design feature because they know when the kids are out of bed. So you sell it oh, yeah. that way. 
All right. And he says, we're going to put together, we're going, he says, we're going to put Berber down once we have that fixed. I think it's, it's more than the, those magic screws that go into the deck and break off. He says, also thinking about putting wood floors in the closets. Craig, stop it's the madness. Cheap. Don't do that. Just sell the house. So. I would, if you have carpet, I mm-hmm. would call someone to clean the carpet so it smells fresh. Mm-hmm. I mean, they might not like it, but the color, but at least mm-hmm. it'll be clean. Just clean the house up and sell it as is. But I will tell you this, if going back to his question and he mentions the little clip off nails, you don't mm-hmm. need those. If you pull your carpet up and you're going to put new carpet down, just have someone go down with a nail gun or a screw gun and nail the whole floor back down before the new Berber goes in. So you really, that part of it would be omitted. It wouldn't be an issue at all. But to put wood in the closets makes no sense to me. Yeah, the um, and wouldn't you you'd probably use screws better more than nails, right? Because wouldn't that hold longer well, you know, than he nails? Wants to go fast and cheap. Go yeah, that's true. Nail gun. It'll it'll pound it down, and you get it done in fifteen minutes. So, I got yeah. squeaky stairs and stuff in my house. Squeaky stairs. <laughs> squeaky it's a, stairs. It's a weekender I used to work with. Squeaky stairs, which came on after me, and he's, his partner was Phil Music. All right, let's uh, more questions come from uh, our um, website here at homeshowradio.com. He says, uh, Claire, she says, I want to replace my carpet with hardwood. We're doing the same thing. It is a concrete floor. I've shopped a lot and see that engineered hardwood is very popular. I'm skeptical. Tom, what's your opinion on this? I think on concrete, uh, the best way to go is engineered floor. Uh, you can you can talk to a, a people in the floor industry. We have Jason over at Texas Floors. If it's in the Houston area, they'll show it to you all. When I tell you what I like about it is it's not a typical uh, a traditional wood floor because they don't go on slabs. That's a different process, and it gets to be very difficult if you're going to do a traditional wood floor. The engineered floors are finished top, bottom, sides. Everything has got a finish on there, so they stay very stable in in humid climates which of course is the houston area and you don't get all the cupping and things like that so if it's put down well and your slab has been moisture tested and it's good an engineered floor i think is a better way to go and the finish is better it'll hold up better under traffic than a finish that's put on on site on a traditional floor because i i can't think of the last time i saw anybody put in a traditional hardwood floor i think engineered is pretty much what what everybody puts down these days isn't it it's true but you still have people that insist on it in fact i had an old uh, a name you'll remember charlie a guy named gary zack who was yeah, yeah. bill zack's son mm-hmm. he mm-hmm. called I me remember. yesterday he was in the flooring business article. for a while wasn't he he still is. He's okay. a flooring inspector now. Mm-hmm. And he was still, st- and now he's an old guy. He's older than me, I think. I'm a flooring so inspector, usually, <laughs> but usually that's after a couple margaritas. Uh, <laughs> that could be. Anyway, he's he's writing an article, and, and he's still an old school wood floor guy. So it's kind of funny we had this question today. But I'm, and he's not going to like what I have to say, but I like the engineered floors better uh, mm-hmm. because I think for the consumer, the average person, they're going to hold up better and be an easier install and an easier uh, product to maintain. Now, that, but isn't one of the downsides to that engineered floor is that it's actually a, a, a veneer on the top. You can only refinish it so many times and then you're going to go through that veneer. Is that right? When you're dealing Usually with an engineer? Twice, but once you refinish mm-hmm. it, you're back to where you're down to the finish that's not as good because you can only apply Mm -hmm. a urethane on top of it and that's what they would do they wouldn't even use a wax on that Mm. and you might be able to refinish them twice but when you buy those floors they're meant to last several decades and if you maintain them with the floor maintenance products that are out there even if you get some very hairline scratches in there there's some products out there you mop down and it fills it up and gives it like a polymer effect on just like hiding scratches on a car so mm. there's products to keep those things lasting. So I wouldn't buy it because it can be refinished. I would buy it because you don't have to refinish it and it lasts a long time and then it'll mm-hmm. be thrown away at the end. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you want a question, you know, you can join in, by the way. We love having you here. And thank you for watching. Um, in addition to Gretchen, uh, Martha's here and Chris is here. And I'm not getting a lot of... I'm mean, having little challenges here with my little device over here. It tells me everybody's here. So if you're here, thanks. We have so much IT stuff 
There's not a week that goes by that me or Charlie or Chad or the phone lines or something isn't working quite right, but we always get it done. <laughs> yeah, well, we're, we we have, well, I think yeah, we're having this challenge right now with your radio show where um, we took a- And the we, phone lines. We took yeah. a lightning strike here. Um, thank God the only thing that knocked out was our, our Telos which is a box that uses that it's a box. I'll keep this simple. It's the little box to get too much that, 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 that t enables us to take the phone and put it on the radio and let you hear what Tom's saying. Uh, you yeah, know, it's that box that does that. And, the um, box. yeah, it's the box. And, it's and I'm a little, something. I'm disappointed because we bought that thing and uh, we only got 20 years use out of it. And so, <laughs> so well, my and, phone screener is 25, but okay. Now, yes. And I told Chad, go buy a new one. And he's like, "No, oh, I found one on eBay. I'm going to, you know, so we're going <laughs> to. He's thrifty. Yeah, I got better in 20 years. I'm not sure that technology has, but all right. Next question comes from Jim in Sanctuary, Texas. He says, what paint should I use to paint a 2000 square foot single story brick house white with black trim brick color um, is a cream yellow brick oh he says it's a cr yellow cream brick and it's in real good condition but apparently he wants to paint it well yeah i'm a little confused with the question but if, if we simplify it and say i want to paint my brick i'm good whether you just remember and charlie you, you remember i told you this once once you paint it it's painted mm -hmm. the, what's the funny thing is is it it looks good it's cream yellow color it's in good shape so i assume maybe you like it you bought the house so Maybe a good uh, professional pressure washing would be all it needs and you don't have to paint it. But for those other people who are watching this too and say, well, yeah, I want to paint my brick too. And they do it sometime in restoration and some people just want to do it. It's a very simple thing to paint. The key to it is, is before you put your regular, really good quality house paint on the outside like you would for hardy siding which is a masonry product holds paint well too it's like brick is stucco has a little bit different paint it's an elastomeric but holds paint well in brick you would put a masonry primer first that ph balances the surface then you come back with your good quality exterior latex house paint any color any you want any kind of sheen you want and just remember, the shinier it is, the more the imperfections show. So I'd prefer to see an eggshell. And then go ahead and paint it. It'll hold paint really well. And it better because it's going to, you can paint it different colors, but it's going to be painted for the rest of its life. Ever and ever. You know, it's funny you say yeah. that. You know, you think you learn lessons. By the way, I just I got to add something here. And I, I, I was remiss in not mentioning this earlier, Tom. I'm sorry about this. But when you put questions in the, the comment section below, you have to put them in on the Home Show Radio comment section on either YouTube or Facebook. Um, Craig put his, you know, it, this is on my personal page too, and he put it there, and, it did, and that doesn't carry through to our system. So you have to do it on one of those two if you're going to put your questions down there so we can answer them for you. But, you know, we, years ago, I remember this when you and I first started working together, um, you know, back in 19, some, and, um, <laughs> it was the 19s, 1900s. Yeah, it started with a 19. That's all. Right. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so we were going to paint our first house and you talked us out of it. Well, stupid is as stupid does, you know, we're looking to here to put a sign on the building and I went and got estimates to have it painted on the brick veneer of the of the building. And I was all excited about it. I thought it was going to look really artisanal and, you know, very sexy. And I went home and yeah. I told Sand I told Sandy about it, and she slapped me up the side of the head and said, "What are you thinking, boy?" <laughs> <laughs> so, no, so we're no not sign. we're not we doing that. Sign. Yeah, we are. We do need a sign. It, it, the fact yeah. is, what happened is when we moved into this building almost four years ago, I put a banner up on the front of the building, thinking, really you know, yeah. And then you know what Harvey came, and then you know a bunch of the, <laughs> the pandemic and the freeze and everything. So we finally, Rudy's people are coming tomorrow to take the banner off the front of the building because it's going to force me to finally get the sign done to put on the front of the building. So you need a sign. It should be we proud. need a sign, right? Mosier Media, yes. Wayne or Windle. I think it's Windle in Fresno. Windle. This, yeah. this is our second question from Fresno. We're number one in Fresno. Um, I like it. I, I'm doing some home remodeling in the future. What order should I do these projects? New flooring. People are getting things in order. This is the second sequence question we've had, too. Oh, that was on early edition. All right. Anyway, what order should we do these in? New flooring, interior painting, kitchen countertops, and backsplash. Which, what order do you go, Tom? Easy. 
Countertops backsplash, get all the rough work done. Then you go in and get all the painting done. Last thing always, floor covering. Because you don't want painters walking on it. You don't want guys that say granite countertops. You don't want them walking on your new floor. The only people allowed to walk on your new floor are the guys installing it. And once they clean up, you and your family and anybody else you allow. But you don't want a bunch of workers in there on a the floor. So get your counters top and your, your tile work done because it's the roughest work. It'll leave stains and stuff around the, uh, the edges. Painters will come in do all the walls, the baseboards, everything. If there's a little overspray or something on the raw floor, the concrete, whatever's there, no big deal. And then have your floor covering come in. And then you might have a painter come back and just touch up a little spot here or there. But for the most part, you're done and your, your job will be, it'll go smoother and it'll look clean at the end. We are, you know, we're in the process of getting our bathroom done yes. over at Casa Grande. And um, they're actually putting the tile down before they're done with the counters it's in a ba it's in a bathroom yeah sometimes they'll do that but they have to protect it really well yeah so you go through all this process in a kitchen i wouldn't it's a bigger room bathrooms are smaller mm -hmm. although you might have a giant bathroom charlie i'm not we, sure we do yeah in fact yeah we have them we're, we're <laughs> yes. yeah we're, we're putting the handball court you know the, the no, <laughs> yeah. and, and sandy we're having inlaid tile on the edge of the the the, the uh, tub that says no diving so and I'll tell you what else, and this is some, you're going to see deviations a lot right now. When we started talking about uh, scarcity of materials, mm -hmm. workers, things like that, sometimes you have to switch and do a few things to keep things moving because maybe the countertops aren't available for three weeks. That mm -hmm. doesn't mean you want to shut it down. So mm -hmm. I want everybody to know that to be very flexible with your contractors right now because it is like we mentioned earlier, it is hard to get things just when you want them. Sometimes you have to be very fluid in your thought process. I don't know if Sandy's watching right now, but if you are <laughs> Sandy, either. I swear by all that's holy, I didn't ask him to say that. No, I've been telling it to okay. a lot of people right now. <laughs> I swear. A lot of people are very frustrated, mm -hmm. especially trying to get new homes in the ground. It, mm -hmm. is, it is really difficult. It is. And in fact... Um, we, they've kind of ground to a halt on the tile work because we, it, Sandy picked this pretty little uh, I don't know, border or some mm -hmm. kind of thing that goes around Trim. the middle. Yeah. yeah. Well, they thought it was in Florida. Well, they're slightly off. It's in Minnesota. And so they're trying to get it here. And so those it's kind of things. the same distance. You know. <laughs> Yeah, and I confuse the two of them all the time. You know, and I think yeah, of sure. you know I think of like Stevens Point, Wisconsin, and Tampa, Florida, almost the same. Almost right. in all distance. Right. But point is, like you say, you got to be flexible, and and things are getting done. I'll tell you what, the the work that they're doing is great. But when they tried to get that that floor up at the edge, they found out that that um, um, engineered floor, whatever it is we have, it it, it was put down to stay down. <laughs> they you know, worked on it for a will day. Over, do overkill, mm -hmm. and they think, "Oh, this is done well. This will right. never come up." I hear this, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking to myself, "You don't know how stupid you are." <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, someday it's, kinda, it's gonna have to. It's kind of harsh. Out. It's kind of harsh. Not <laughs> stupid, care. you know. I saw. I tried to pull a slab out once to put a room addition on. It yeah. was three feet thick. We just poured on top of it, and the homeowner was freaking out. And he said, well, that guy put it in really well. That guy, he built a bomb shelter. You don't need to do that. Mm -hmm. Do what's needed to be done. Don't mm -hmm. do more than that because it'll be fine. I see that with people in, you know, I'm getting a little bit into photography, you know. But I'll see that with people who put yes. a filter on the lens, and they'll tighten it on there. I'm like, dude, you just have to till it stops and, and just because you're going to want to get it off. Anyway, it goes with everything, so, even yeah. cooking. You know, if one teaspoon of sugar is good, don't put five. That's just the way it is. Well, now, sugar. the only place where I found that that's different is one yes. time. One time I was making this delicious bourbon bread pudding. Oh, nice. <laughs> one for them, Last one question. for you, one for everybody. <laughs> that's it. John in Springs asks, what type of blown in attic insulation is best how much should i add on top of the measly five inches of existing 22 year old inches in my attic i would use uh formaldehyde free fiberglass i'd blow it in you want to reach at least an r30 you have five inches now and r30 is going to be 14 to 16 inches so give it a good 10 to 12 let's say 12 inches 
and I think you're covered really well and it'll be fine. Keep it simple, don't overthink it. It all is in the thickness of it. And people don't realize that on the package of insulation, you have the R value in big letters and the thickness in the same size letters. That's because it has to have both. If you take an R30, which is supposed to be, let's just say off the top of my head, 12 inches deep, and you compress it to six inches deep, which is easily done because they roll it up real tight, and once it fluffs out, it gets bigger, then you don't have an R30. You have to have both. Mm. Uh, I, you know, we get, we get letters, and um, we got one this week, somebody asking about um, why you are so formaldehyde free because um they're like in foam like i guess live without diseases <laughs> but it's, but you know the point they're making is everything has all all of it has a certain level of formaldehyde in it doesn't it it certainly does so it is it, it's like your bourbon or the tequila or the spoonful of sugar i can't wait to hear how this ties this in. much why would you want to have more okay you have to have more fair five enough five times is better than this People love the new car smell. It's formaldehyde. Oh, mm -hmm. It smells great. And then yeah. when it wears out, because it does outgas after a while, luckily in a car pretty quickly, especially mm -hmm. in hot climates, because heat makes it outgas. Then, uh, hey, it's it's no longer cool anymore. You need a new car so you can keep smelling the mm -hmm. formaldehyde. It's not good for you. Mm -hmm. And That's sometimes why. sometimes there's some other kind of outgassing that will trump that in the car as well. Outgassing of be. the... But Charlie, seriously, mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. really care about the health of people in a home. It's been mm -hmm. a lifelong uh, tradition with me from my college days on. Healthy living in a home is not as easy as it sounds and a lot of problems people have, and they do trace it, and there's a lot of studies done, is caused by unhealthy homes and the way things are built, especially under the guise of energy efficiency. And an unhealthy home is not a good home for anybody. And I know that we're old. I'm 60, going to be 63 in August. I mean, I'm, I've done as much damage as going to happen. I don't have much time. But I think about the little babies that are being born and growing up in those homes. I think about the children. I really do. And that's why you'll hear me get very adamant about certain things that you want to avoid because you can't avoid it all. So avoid as much as you can. Hmm. Yes. I'm going to call Chris here real quick. Hey, Chris. Yes, sir. It's our video producer, Chris Desmond. I'm calling him here. Hey, Chris, when is that first smell video going to be ready? Uh, <laughs> nice. Tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah. Awesome. Is that, which one is that? Um, I want them both done, but the, the plumbing one is close. Okay, cool. All right. Well, thank you. You're on Ask Tom Live, and now the whole world knows. <laughs> yes. yeah. yeah. Bye. Yes. So there you go. Chris has made the promise to all the world that, the you know, as much as you hate those smell questions, we've been working on this video, like, since before smells existed. It's just one of these videos. Hey, I worked forever with him today done. at 10 this morning. Yes. And uh, we're, we are the, putting, all the we're going to put a video done. out there about plumbing smells in your house. And um, it's going to have some people from Abacus talking about that. And then next week, it's, it's, a, it's a, a, a stinko duo, because next week we're going to have about air conditioning smells. We were going to have them in one Dead video. Dead rats in the ductwork, you know, uh, wet sock syndrome. That's, that's all that. not good for you. Right. Yes. And we were going to do it all in one video, but it was it was, it was, was too much olfactory goodness to pack into one video. So we broke it into Always two. trust your nose. It tells you things. That's why it's above your mouth. So you smell something before it goes in at mouth. We could talk about the locations of other things relative to other pieces because <laughs> yes. there's some design in the human body I don't understand, but that's for another show, another time. And uh, okay. we're out of time for today. Um, Tom is going to be um, uh, here this Saturday and Sunday. Yes. 9 to 12 on Saturday <laughs> and 8 to 11 on Sunday. No doubt about it. I'll be on Sports Radio 610. we got to give our station we've been on for so many years. A great plug. It's a great place to be. And you can join us too. And don't forget Danny. He's got the gardening the thumbs of, of I don't know, the green thumbs is what they call it. <laughs> green anyway, thumb. he's got thumbs. I know he has thumbs because he can do this. 
Uh, as, as far as that goes, he's, he's going to be kids. handling your gardening questions from 7 to 9 on Saturday. Okay. Don't try this at home. Tom is a trained professional. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah. Opposing thumbs. That's it. Conjugating <laughs> nouns and verbs is not for the faint of heart. Oh, no. Okay. okay. Hey, by the way, Mike, Mike, Mike saw his closing note. He says, if you got time for one more question, he says, any recommendations for cabinets? I have new tile going in now and need to get cabinets going. But everyone I call are looking for the insurance jobs. Cabinets? I, I assume he's in Houston, Charlie. So I'm yeah. going to say 281 Kitchen. 281 Kitchen. Call Trifection. They have a custom cabinet making slash furniture making, whatever. They can do it. Their cabinets are fantastic. And I know Jeff loves to keep his cabinet guys busy. They'll work that cabinet system in. They just did cabinets for my laundry room. When mm -hmm. I go home to Houston on um, between my, my work shifts, I absolutely just sit in my laundry room and open close the doors. They're so nice. They do a fantastic job. So that is definitely, and I've had listeners who have been in the middle of woodworking uh, jobs, making things for people. They, they couldn't do it anymore because of health reasons or something. I remember one in particular, and he didn't know what to do to finish this present he was making for his daughter and son-in-law. And he went to Trifection. They finished it up for him. He was the happiest guy in the world. So they will do cabinets. They love it. We are having built you a kitchen table, my friend. Let's they not, did. Let's not dismiss three times because they couldn't find the one you wanted. Right now, well, three actually, three times. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, it, that's a whole other story. I'm not going to get into that story right now, B, but but I will tell yeah. you this: um, they had to build that table because Sandy, when we were remodeling our kitchen, we have we I, I showed her this picture in a magazine. We had already started the kitchen project, and I showed her this picture in a magazine. Look at this: a banquette seat. That's something to think about in the future. I came home the next afternoon and they were measuring for it in the kitchen. <laughs> so, but, but because they did that, because of the dimensions of it, you couldn't put a table in there. It was, it, right. it, it was a, a square one didn't work, a round one didn't work, or an octagonal one. So they had to make one to fit. When we sell that house, the table's going with it because it, <laughs> it has to stay with the house. It, it, yeah, because it, it, it fits the space and, and all that. Yeah. So anyway, but I will tell you this about that, about their cabinets. I'm sorry to brag on about Trifection today, but um, they're, <laughs> they're, they're yeah, well, you know, they're, if they're at the house much longer, we're going to charge them rent. But they, um, and it's not their fault. But anyway, they, oh. they um, two things about them is number one, Sandy has taken over the master closet. And so they're building me an entire wall of closet in the master bedroom. And it looks fantastic. Just it's furniture. It's the kind of cabinet your kids will fight each other to have when you're gone. I mean, it's just beautiful stuff. And the other thing is, this is how committed these guys are getting done. The other morning, Sandy's asleep in bed and the guy comes in and says, excuse me, ma'am. <laughs> He'd come in because they had the key to get in and she was still asleep. It's so like anyway. Green Acres. Yeah, it really is. When they always have the remodelers in the bedroom. <laughs> yeah, yes. but they're awesome. They're awesome people. So anyway. Yeah, so, you're hey. only talking 90 days. I want you and Sandy to chill since the freeze in February. Right. It's been 90 days. It's going to mm -hmm. take longer to get it done. And here's a cool thing. When you move your stuff from room to room, you find all kinds of things. <laughs> it's like Christmas. Yeah, nice. So, all right. Hey, um, if you're looking to find somebody you can trust, go to homeshowradio.com. Click on the... Uh, uh, Find a pro or better yeah, scroll down. You'll find all of the pros right here on our homepage. Those are the people that Tom trusts. And uh, we also organize them by category, make it easier. You see, you scroll down, you see the different categories of them right there. Those are people you can trust to do the work around your house because Tom trusts them and you can too. If you'd like to get your questions here on um, the show, like you've seen some of the ones we've asked here, we also use the questions on our a daily ask tom videos that we post at homeshowradio.com go to homeshowradio.com click on that blue that one ask tom button it'll take you to this page and you can fill out the form you can send us pictures you can send us videos you can do whatever your heart desires to help us answer your question and give you help uh, because Tom wants to help you, whether it's a remodeling project, an upgrade, or or something that, that just can't figure out for yourself. Tom will give you the advice you need, and we'll post a new video every day because he likes to do them at homeshowradio.com, our Facebook page, and our YouTube channel. I've never said that before, so, you know, only a million times. So, anyway, so that's it for this week. We, would be, we will not be here next week. There's going to be an encore presentation next week because I'm 
going for the first time since 2007. I'm I'm taking a, a vacation. Really? <laughs> yeah. I did not yeah. know that. Yeah. Uh, I'm but going... no, that's good because I have my annual training. I was hoping to find a way to get out of it. I don't even have to ask now, so it's going to be wonderful. Thank you. See, it's synchronicity. <laughs> no. It works. <laughs> That, no, no but, that I don't we'll have, have to an, carry all this equipment with me. No, no, but we'll have, an, on, on we'll have an encore production. Very, and, and and when I get back from my trip, you're going to be in our studio downstairs shooting commercials for Absolute Comfort Air. Just I remember that's Monday, on your calendar, 17th. too. All right. But, um, yep. but I'm going out to the desert. I'm going out to um, uh, Joshua Tree National Park, and we're going to be taking pictures at night of the, uh, uh, the Milky Way and stuff like that for a week. And I can't imagine, I can't understand why Sandy didn't want to tag along. I can't wait to, to stand see in the picture, desert that Milky, all night. That Milky Way bar, man. That Milky Way bar. Yeah. That's what you yeah. bring her back. Bring her back a picture of a Milky Way bar. I'm, I told her. I said I'm, I'm going for the Milky <laughs> yeah, Way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hoping maybe <laughs> hope because I'm going out with the Three Musketeers and it's costing me a hundred grand. All right. That's it for this week. We'll be back. Let's get candy jokes, honey. Anyway, we'll we'll see you next. Uh, we'll see you in oh. two weeks. Next week, an encore show. Thanks. Got a question? Ask. Uh, 